Hi everyone, this is Ants. Today, I'm gonna to go through an example of a very simple game written in Java that came from the libgdx wiki page um, and actually converted it using the Kotlin JVM um, Godot game engine editor. And it's a very simple game. And the audience of this is if you're coming from libgdx or any other uh, Java-based or Kotlin-based um, games uh, framework or library, you could actually find out how easy it is to actually use Java and create games in Godot. So let's get started. Now I'm getting the original game from libgdx and it's called a simple game. It's part of the uh, Wikipedia and this is where we kind of funnel new people to libgdx to kind of create like a simple, simple, simple game. And it goes through all the steps, but down at the bottom is the final code, right? And the reason why I'm gonna have this is so we can compare on, on the Godot side and on the libgdx side, kind of the differences and, and that sort of thing so that uh, we can um, see um, where we are at. So again, uh, we're gonna go through this in another video of how to install Kotlin, um, Godot Kotlin JVM and where to get it and um, where to get the templates and how to create a thing, but that's in another video, right? So I'm just gonna just show you a quick example. And so here we're gonna get started. Okay, so again, um, this example on the right is libgdx side using Java and then on the left side um, is the Godot. So, um, you have all your imports here and let's go through one by one, right? So the background texture, which is the background of the game, and maybe I should show you it running in Godot first. Let's do a build. And let's start this. And the background texture is the cityscapes from a balcony or from a window or whatever. So that's what we mean by that. We have a bucket and we have raindrops and we have music and we have the drop sound. So those are basically kind of all the different kind of uh, pieces, okay? So now that I show you it running now, we'll get some better context into the variables that we're going through, right? So the background texture, you don't need to handle that within code because it's done in the editor, right? Um, the bucket texture, and then they have a bucket, a rectangle, um, but the bucket texture is a Sprite 2D in uh, Godot. Um, and then we have the drop texture. Again, I have a Sprite 2D for uh, the, the raindrops. And then we have a, a drop sound. And I used the audio stream player, which is a 2D player, right? because uh, Godot supports 3D sounds, but 2D is, is all we need. Um, uh, keep track of uh, drop width and drop height. Within the libgdx code, they put these as local variables. I just put it at the top just to make things easier. Uh, and then we go through a bunch of uh, um, kind of things for Godot, right? So there's, there's something called uh, a group, and I'll, I'll explain that later. And then in terms of the UI functionality of detecting left, right, uh, controller left, right, A and D, that sort of thing, you just group it into uh, an action and now all your input is uh, controlled and you don't need individual checks on if the A key or the left key or the controller on the left. So this is just setting up a bunch of stuff like that. Um, and then all this uh, kind of draw stuff, um, like viewport and uh, sprite batch, you're not gonna need. Uh, the bucket sprite, I have it already. And then uh, over here, we have the array of drop sprites. You don't need an array uh, for this. Uh, I'll show you how in Godot, you just use the actual scene graph and just add it to the parent. You don't need to do this sort of stuff. It just adds overhead and the drop timer to figure out when to drop um, your raindrops. And then you have the rectangle. So you don't, for collision detection, so we use the rectangle for collision uh, detection. Under uh, Godot, 
if you go to a, a sprite like the bucket uh, you go to 2d and you click on sprite and then you basically say uh, create collision polygon 2d you could actually create a collision mesh and, and all that and 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 then it adds it to the node and then you have collision detection done for you but um, yeah, I didn't go that down that route. It'll be just too, just too, too complicated. But what I'm trying to say is a lot of the stuff that you have to do and reinvent the wheel in libgdx, you don't have to do in Godot. But anyway, so let's move on. So the create method uh, in uh, libgdx and the on ready or the ready method is kind of basically the same. There's a lot of kind of stuff you need to set up uh, on libgdx, but at the end of the day, you have to set up the drop uh uh, the sounds, the bucket, and the actual raindrops, right? And so that's basically it there. So the resize, that's kind of done by the engine and all that. So let's move down to um, the process, and which is the render in libgdx. So this is called every frame, similar to the render of uh, libgdx. And we go through a function called input, which handles all the input, the logic, and then the draw, right? But you don't need draw in, in Godot because kind of like the engine does it for you, right? So let's go on the input, right? Um, oh, the other thing is in the libgx example, the viewport is eight by five, and I have it as 800 by 500. I just multiplied everything by 100. There's nothing wrong or right about it. It's just, I just, want better resolution on, on that sort of thing, but it's it's okay. Um, and so the speed, and then uh, you check if the left or right key. So these are keys. And for me, I'm using um, actions, right? And that would, that means that on the Godot side, I could add any, action, uh, any key or uh, input event or mouse event to this action. So I have, uh, the um, uh, cursor key left and A on the UI left, and it also has all the controller stuff like the D-pad left and one of the axes, I think axis zero left. So what I'm trying to say is with one line of code is I could support uh, keyboard, um, multiple keyboard bindings and also uh, controller bindings and all that. So this, again, this is in, with one line of code basically. So, and then the other thing is on touch, uh, one of the things I could have did better is mouse button right or left, but no, no biggie on this, right? And basically, that's basically it. If it's touch, I don't have to kind of um, do these two lines because it's already, um, you could get it from the viewport and then you just center X, right? And I hard code the Y there, so. Again, I have to pass a vector too. Uh, there's methods on the libgdx size that actually do X and Y, but that also libgdx also has one where you could pass a vector also. Okay, so now go to the logic, right? And uh, this is just setting up local variables, so that's fine, but um, you basically, uh, clamp the bucket left and right size. So this is it. It's very similar. Like, honestly, the only difference where, where I should just focus on or else I'm going to lose the audience is um, uh, in libgdx uh, um, situation, they use an array. You don't have to use an array within Godot. You basically say, get me the entire scene graph, the tree, and get me all nodes that are assigned to the drop group. And then I could iterate through that as sprites and actually just do whatever it needs to be done. And that's basically it. And um, if you look over here, um, if, if, it, it go, if the drop actually goes past the bottom of the screen, then remove the sprite. All, uh, I, all I have to do is just remove child from the scene graph, right? And I'll show you this stuff uh, being run in Godot and all that kind of stuff. The only difference between Godot and libgdx is Y gets smaller on libgdx going down and then Y gets larger on Godot going down. So Y equals up and you know, that sort of thing is different between libgdx and Godot. 
And um, if this is the collision, right? So the bucket rectangle intersects drop rectangle, similar to uh, on the uh, libgdx side. They have to remove it from the index all and then drop uh, sound plays. And I just removed the child and that's basically it, right? And then we have uh, drop timer. It's exact same code. It's literally the exact same code because we have the same methods and yeah. So I don't have a draw method because I don't need it. So another way of putting it, it is the Godot engine basically tries to put the view in the editor. And so you don't really have to do this view stuff. Um, you use the editor to do that, right? But there's no uh, draw method and the create drop droplet, um, right? So I have this code here. Basically, um, it creates a new instance of the drop sprite, right? And I duplicate the drop sprite. So I make a copy of it and then I add it to the scene and I set up its position and I make it random X and Y and all kind of stuff. So that's basically it. So I'm at 84 lines of code here and the libgdx is over 160. It's half the code, believe it or not, uh, of the libgdx. So um, let's go and to the Godot side. So I'm gonna, on the project settings, if I go to the input map, see the UI left, I set up the A, the left key, and all the joypad, uh, either the D-pad and the left stick, that sort of stuff. It all could be set up once in the project, and then you have access to kind of all that, uh, right? Um, the music, I didn't have any code to, to control the music, and the reason why is the music is controlled through the editor where once, where I set it as looping on, and autoplay on. So I don't need any code to actually play the music in the background. And you can set the volume here. Now, if you wanna change the volume or turn it off, yeah, you have to actually do it on code, but that's fine, right? Um, and the background, you just set it up in the editor. You don't have to do anything. And also, if you notice, I don't set the, the position of the bucket in code. You just set it in um, the editor, right? So um, when I'm running this, and I go to remote, as you can see on the left here, it's dynamically adding and removing the nodes, i.e. the array list on libgdx. So this is the whole, the whole point is like, why introduce another layer of things when you could just add the stuff to um, um, the scene graph, right? Yeah. So that's basically it. And um, again, now that you're in Godot, you have access to uh, uh, GLES3, if you wanna do um, to the web, uh, mobile so that it's faster on mobile and the forward plus, which is Vulkan, right? And this is the whole thing right now. Right. And by the way, you could actually see uh, your code in Godot, but I don't code in the Godot editor. It's similar to the C sharp set set uh, setup. I actually code uh, using uh, IntelliJ and there's a plugin which a new version has just come out and it's not been published to. Yeah, I should show you that So settings and um, Godot Kotlin JVN here, and there's a newer, newer vo uh, version now, right, which is over here, and it just came out uh, yesterday, and it's not been published, right? So I'm using the newer version of everything, but the plugin is still a little bit behind because it, it's been published yesterday, and it hasn't been approved yet and all that kind of stuff. But they have a plugin, and it actually is, this is the reason why, is the plugin makes Things great. I know this is a script. I know this is an overridable function and that sort of thing, right? And yeah, we should talk a little bit about what you need to do is all the overridable functions within the node, you have to put these annotations there, which is not, and there's other annotations to do, but that's basically it. And I actually like this annotations because it actually tells me, oh, under, underscore process is something that's built into um, the, um, 
the Godot framework, i.e. it's part of the node and that sort of thing, right? Uh, some other hints it's doing is because this is made for Kotlin and nothing is null in Kotlin, Kotlin I'm not an expert in Kotlin, but there's a lot of stuff that's saying, hey, this is not guaranteed to be, this may produce a null pointer exception. It's actually warning me that, hey, this could be null, but we as in Java know that, you know, if you're using a library and you're making a call, it could be null, right? So, but that's all the other, the, the highlighting in terms of kind of like uh, code, like there's no other errors other than that, right? Uh, not errors, warnings. So, yeah. Okay, so, um, that's basically it, right? So this is the place where to get it. And if a future video, I'm gonna show how to install everything, how to get the default. There's gonna be three different ways to actually generate a sample project or template. And yeah, that's basically it. So I hopefully uh, you enjoyed that. And I always like to end things off uh, visually. So let's just play this. Anyways, thank you for watching. Take care.